so the fumes of the smoke were coming in the door like past us and I remember like I think we were virtually stoned G'day recently I was asked a question by Puppy Breath who is one of my most longest and loyal subscribers in fact the founder and manager of hashtag smack fans and she asked me what I did before YouTube so I thought I'd kind of throw together this video it won't be one of my most popular videos but for those of you interested a little bit about my history both work and what I did for sports etc so um, yeah here we go <laughs> and by the way if you remember back a little way when I had a haircut well I'm just on my way to get a haircut and the big reveal at the end so how much did I get cut off nothing just a trim <laughs> where I had one centimeter off just a little look at my hair as you see it was only a trim guess what I did yesterday I had about five or six inches, don't ask me what that is in centimetres, ten, cut off my hair. <laughs> now I know you haven't seen me on camera much lately, except for my foot. What the hell footprint is this? There's my foot. Holy crap. But that doesn't mean I haven't been on camera. The other week I did a shoot that was postponed twice for various reasons, one being weather two being that sudden lockdown we had. So I needed to have the long straggly hair still, so I waited until that was finished before I had the haircut. That was just a music video I did, and in due course, once it's finished and released, I'll put a link to it, and if I'm allowed to, I'll put some behind the scenes shots. Here's a little snippet of one now, but um, bear in mind, because it was a music video, there was no actual dialogue, there was mouth movement, so this particular little scene. I'm just babbling on with rubbish. It was a lot of fun though. Chasey, can you come in here and then like just push sort of the Yeah, a couple more of those. Be great, yeah. Oh, don't push me too far. We're all get angry and upset and I'll cry on camera. So get back to work. Okay, cut. Thanks. So yes, if I get permission from the producer, director and the band I may put a series of those behind the scenes shots in a future video soon. And personally, I never take um, my phone on set. It's always switched off and in my bag, my acting bag, as I call it. Now, it was very early morning that I had to set off for that shoot and I had no intention of vlogging it, so I didn't. I did take a couple of pictures, like the fog from the Mongol Ferry. The shoot was about an hour away, out west this time. Also stopped and took a few pictures of the landscape itself, which was quite beautiful. Just a quick update on my health, and I'll update this in a few months when the whole thing's over. But yes, when you last saw me on camera here, it was just after I came out of hospital for a few days, a follow-up for my gallstone that they didn't find. This is a short video just to let you know I'm back home. Pleased to have cut this wristband off my wrist. I've been in hospital for three nights had about 10 hours sleep total in that time so if you think I look bad now I'm probably look worse in person so I'll update you there but yeah I was quite tired for about a week very lethargic and I really had to force myself to put together a video which was the the little comedy skits things so one thing about doing the film shoot was that it really lifted my spirits and uh, yeah so ever since then things have improved my body's come back to normal but my liver functions are uh, still high but they're coming down in a positive way so the liver really took a hammering but i'll update that in the future now i'll try not to make this video too hard on myself by doing many cutaway shots or s taking days to search for old photographs but anyway so i guess the best place to start would be way back i went to east brisbane state school i went to morningside state school for a year then i went on of course in uh, due time to Cooper High School. I uh, also did some um, TAFE things between that and etc. Some higher education. Um, yeah. So I guess a good place for me to start 
is way back when I was a little boy and I picked up a book, um, probably still have the book somewhere maybe, about photography and I'd already started taking slides uh, mostly when my mum and I used to go on little trips, day trips. So my love of photography grew and in due course I eventually became a freelance photographer, a professional photographer uh, for a number of years and I guess that was my first business and I really enjoyed that. I, I did some newspaper things and uh, magazines and, and I used to do portraits and things too but uh, a lot of that I did in black and white, uh, especially the people. The one thing I found though eventually is when it came to taking photographs for money, in some way it lost a bit of joy for me. Uh, I guess I felt a bit more constrained on certain jobs. Most things I just did creatively. So anyway, I eventually went to College of Art in 1987 and did film and video. So I studied film and video production at Seven Hills College of Arts as it was back then. Went on and studied advanced photography at uh, TAFE, etc. I taught video production now and then. Also used to teach darkroom techniques because I used to develop my own photographs. So that was quite enjoyable. I remember one time we were at the, at the place and it was, a, it was free for people to come. Uh, mostly unemployed people would come there, they were my, my clients, but I remember they had a very rudimentary um, dark room. It was an old house and, and this is a story I'll never forget. We, because of the chemicals of the developer and the solutions used, we had an exhaust fan, but the door to the dark room was wood and had a gap under the door. so naturally the breeze would come under the door and like right past us and, and because of, I'm just saying most people were really cool in fact everyone was really awesome there was one guy I remember he he used to come there and he used to smoke you know not cigarettes we'll say that's fine nothing to do with me but he was sitting out in the room adjacent to the where I was teaching dark room so the fumes of the smoke were coming in the door like past us and I remember like I think we were virtually stoned while I'm trying to teach how to do um, photography techniques and dark room there was a good memory uh, sad because I found out that guy actually committed suicide um, sometime later so yeah sad about the downsides of life but anyway moving on after that I joined the film industry proper which was about 35 years ago I guess so during those 35 years I did a number of things like have my own businesses uh, computers and website building which I no longer do I also lived in Canberra ACT for about a year so let's go for a little walk take the crows with us so I asked Teddy if she wanted to be in the vlog but Unfortunately, Teddy is a bit cold, so I've covered her up here on the lounge. Hey, Teddy. She said, I'll do the next one. All right. So let's go out to Studio A. Well, it's starting to look a little bit better, but it was pretty cold today, actually. So it was getting towards winter. I thought it might rain, but maybe not. We'll see. That's where Meow and Tippy are buried now, by the way in the garden. So yeah, also in my life I've, without falling down the steps, I've done martial arts did uh, original Kung Fu uh, Shaolin Temple style. Ah! Stood on a prickle. Excuse me. I didn't have to be trained to stand on prickles. <laughs> uh, I did the uh, werewolf. Their wolf. Their castle. 
did some <laughs> uh, Surinjuru Karate doll. Did a little bit of a keto here and there. All good fun. Nothing to do, <laughs> really, with the... Uh, oh, there's no prick off. Just checking around for snakes here. Uh, it was upstairs where I found that snake the other week, dead snake. It was a harmless snake, but still a snake. I guess I should mention that I used to do shooting as a sport. Uh, both, well, I was a range officer, safety officer at the SSAA. Used to load my own ammunition. Yeah, haven't done that for decades. Um, also on a sadder note, although necessary, I used to sometimes go out west and help cull kangaroos and uh, pigs. But I'm quite happy to never take a life again. Having said that, I think I stood on an end. Let's go back up towards Studio A and sit down. Scuba diving. There's something I had to learn to do it was all part of a ridiculous project that cost me many thousands of dollars. Some guy I knew that was a rip-off, but anyway, the long and the short is it was all part of some salvage operation that never happened. I never went for my paddy diver's license, although I probably should have. And in that process, I spent a lot of money on some gear for the trip, uh, including one thing, here's an ancient old Magellan GPS. I haven't taken out for years. <laughs> it's one of the first GPS's. Uh, th this all went to the guy and you can see it's quite stuffed. I finally got it back a few years ago. The screen was all broken and I tried to fix it and yeah this no longer would function because they changed the satellites but here's a very ancient uh, Magellan Meridian XL GPS so this was how big they are or were. <laughs> anyway. I also did ship writing, worked on the guy's yacht for about two years at the Southport Yacht Club quite often, usually unpaid, and I even hired a yacht for a week's training at sea. Uh, once again, I did it the long way round, spent more money than if I would have actually qualified and I would have had a fully qualified proper, um, whatever you call it these days, to, <laughs> to be in control of a very large boat. I won't say ship, but boat. Again, something I spent more money doing than if I would have gone about it the other way. Everything to do with that thing was crazy. And it came to the point where I was then supposed to sail from Southport to Numea in New Caledonia by myself. And that's the point I pulled the pin. I thought, no, it's not worth risking my life to do that. Thank you very much. I also worked in security. I've done armed escorts, bodyguard type stuff. Uh, behind the scenes surveillance operations. All good fun. Not the nicest of days we've had lately. So eventually I joined the government and uh, well let's just say I, if you don't know already, I uh, helped keep the dangerous psychopaths uh, under control that, that should have been in jail really but fell between the net. So I did a lot of different training there, professional assault response training, various certificates, yeah. I was also a peer supporter. I became a union delegate, worked on the support team, sat on recruitment and selection panels, and helped work on a bit of government policy. So after that, it brings me to where I became involved in YouTube on a serious level. Let's go back to Studio A and talk about that. So I started YouTube probably 15 years ago. It was just the random odd clip I'd put up most of the time, pretty short ones. I won't do cutaway shots of some of them because they're old and a lot of them are really rubbish. But they're basically short ones and it was only, and Puppy Breath will know this because she came to my channel because of this guy. So we're looking at probably seven years ago, I guess. There's a guy who now has a quite a big YouTube channel. Um, not a mega YouTube channel, but very big. He's living very comfortably now. 
So Martin Lewis is the one that I started speaking to about YouTube. This was back when he still lived in Brisbane and he made a little, I've done a story on this a long time ago, he made a little video about YouTubers and uh, having fake uh, actors or fake scenes with actors actually filmed with actors. Hey everyone, it's your boy Martin Lewis from YouTube. Most of the videos that pranksters are posting online, on Facebook, YouTube, not all of them are real. A lot of them are actually skits, they're actually web series, they're not actual real pranks, and the real people that are getting pranked are you guys. I don't believe everything that you see online. And so he advertised and I went along and, yeah. Um, here's a little snippet of that once again if you've never seen it. The, you right there, fella? My jams. What the fuck are you doing? The people in this video were actually actors. Hi, I'm Steve Mack. The first bit of advice he said is monetize everything. So I did. And I really have to again give credit to Martin for being the one that really inspired me to start taking YouTube more seriously. And I'm so thankful because I love it. I still love it to this day. In fact, I paid Martin Lewis to do the logo that you see on my page. I get to create whatever I want. I've said this part many times. I'm not a huge channel because I don't have one specific genre. If you want to be a big channel, you really have to pursue just one line and that's it. And I've never wanted to be restricted. So that's kind of a comeback on me as to why I'm not a big channel after 15 years of it. And most of you would know the last seven years, it's been a really, really constant thing I've done. I've put an awful lot of effort into it. Still don't have that many subscribers. And I see new people come along all the time. And before you know it, whew, double that in very short time. But because they tend to stick to one niche. I've got a playlist I've done of hints to help you with your YouTube creation. You can check that out, but that's not what this video is about. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. That's a bit of my background. And I know I've probably forgotten at least 50% of things I've done, but yeah. So there's a bit of, bit of Steve Mac pre-YouTube. Okay, so until next time, cheers. And I also am thinking about taking the channel to another level. I'll make a future announcement about that if I do it. But it's something that's been suggested a few times, so. Stick with me and you'll know in, in due course. All right, see you soon. Bye.